are you passionate about structures? I know you are. There are many more engineers who are passionate about structures. And after a few years of experience, they plunge into consulting and they plunge without a proper planning. It's so important that you plan your consulting so that you are not stuck with want of revenue. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about two things. One is on how to quickly forecast your revenue and the other is to quickly diversify your business initially so that you get that revenue for your daily operations. Hi all, this is Printed from Civilera.com. Your success is not just being technically competent, it is much more than that. And uh, first, we will see some of the ways that you can increase your revenue or diversify your revenue models so that you are not stuck. After that, I will show you how to forecast some of it. What you have to do basically is first do the forecasting. Identify all your possible revenue models that will help you initially. It's not possible for everybody that straight away when you get into consulting, you get a lot of projects. So it's very important you understand what revenue you can get per month. I will show you a quick method after explaining the possible revenue models and then you will have to outlay your expense and then you also need to know and identify when you will receive these payments. All your clients are not going to pay you at the same time. It may be a stage payment and so on. So you need to know your cash flow projection as well in order to maintain your office. Even if it's small, it's good if you understand this so that you can plan your things well. Now let me first tell you your normal consulting projects can be your first revenue model but split this into two parts. One is your normal projects which are slightly medium in nature and then also split your revenue forecast between small residentials. Small residentials might fetch you a lump sum amount of fee and it may be easy for you to identify such clients and such projects whereas a medium project may be a little hard for you to find when you start initially. So this can be one of your revenue model and as a second revenue model to diversify a bit in order to bring in some revenue you can look at freelancing for other consultants. These are methods used by many successful consultants when they started off so that they are not stuck. These freelancing options could be from an architect or from an established consultant, a structural consultant, maybe a previous employer of yours if he has good faith in you and the competence and the resourcefulness that you have demonstrated is good enough then they might be okay to freelance with you. Many consultants would be open to continue giving you projects until they find a new replacement for you and if things works well they might continue to freelance with you. Now this can be for a per month fixed income or based on the size and magnitude of the project. It depends on how you have that agreement and arrangement and how comfortable you are in these arrangements. And many times architects will be open for a per month fixed income consulting when you are a beginner and when they have small residentials to give you. And a third possibility of revenue is taking up site inspection for other consultants. It could be an established consultant or your previous employee. They might have projects all over your city and you may be in one part of the city and the main consultant may be in another part of the city. So instead of spending time going to the site, the consultants would be open to outsource that site inspection for you and you can charge per visit and thereby diversify your revenue model. You can have an additional source of income in case the number of projects that you are getting is less a month you can take up these work and then keep your cash flow and the fourth diversification that I suggest you is one of the best nowadays in larger cities there are a lot of people looking to buy out new apartments and new projects new sites and so on so you can offer a quality checking service where you check out the quality of construction, you do a structural audit, you do a quality audit, you prepare a nag list for them before the builder hands over the project to the client. You can identify what are the nag, what are the kind of specifications offered by the builder. Have that been met? Have they given the client the promised specifications and things on? So you may have to document it in the end and offer a document as the outcome of this particular service. If you can have a tie up with a lawyer, you can even take up checking out the documentation part and the legal part of it and then offer as a total service. So it's like before the builder hand over the project to the client, you are looking at the structural and building bylaw related aspects and so on. There are a lot more things to explain in this, but then that we will keep for another video. But this quality checks before handing over by the builder to the client 
offering such a service is a great diversification which can bring in a lot of cash flow and revenue for you you can just make a google search for quality checks before handover of apartments you can see at least five major companies doing the service and that itself talks about the scope in that field how you do it better than them is a different question so in case if you have any questions please feel free to contact me let me now show you how to forecast this very quickly it's a very simple method there is nothing rocket science in this but then this is something we generally engineers don't do when they start up so i reinforce the importance of doing this so i have estimated all the kind of works that you can do so in case if you think that you have more skills than pure consulting add all your skills here so here what i have done is i have kept medium project consulting as a scope small houses as a scope freelancing for other consultants and architects as a scope site inspection for others as a scope and quality checks now if you think that you are good in something else like detailing and you can offer detailing as a service initially you can add that also you identify your different skill set and where you can provide service and add on here now your revenue forecast should be based on what you ultimately want to get at the end of the month so based on that you have your rate fixed you decide the number of projects approximately based on your understanding how many projects is possible that you can get so for example if you have decided that your fee is three rupees per square feet i am not saying that three should be your fee it could be depending on various factors so if you are able to easily get ten thousand square feet of work per month then if you are able to charge three rupees per square feet then that should bring you thirty thousand revenue but then again you have to see the stage payment and then identify how much is possible per month and if you are able to do five houses per month at a fee of say twenty five thousand, I'm again putting an arbitrary figure there. It depends on the complication of the project and your area and various other factors are involved. So like this, based on the fee that you agree and the fee that you are able to get in your area plus the number of projects you will be able to forecast. And you also need to decide the number and the square feet based on the easiness in which you can get them. So you need to have an idea on how many quality checking projects you will be able to get, how many site inspection work you may be able to get, how many freelance you may be able to get. So all this planning will allow you to understand the difficulty. So you try it for one month, you will be able to come out with exact, with more predictable figures. So if you are able to get three easily, then that will bring you 30,000 rupees. And if you are able to get three inspection work, then 15,000 is easy and so on. And you also need to decide if you are working from home or if you are having an office space on rent. What are the stationary requirement? What is the drafting that you are going to spend? Are you going to do on your own or you are planning to hire somebody on a part time basis? All this. So finally, you will be able to arrive at the expenses figure and the total revenue that you are able to make per month. Now, the key is in identifying how easy it is for you to get these numbers. So you will have an idea and you can play around with that and decide the fee also based on that and then arrive at the figure that you are wanting to have at the end of the month. There are more things that you need to look into, which I will explain in some other video or all these are covered and many advanced things are covered in our mentoring programs. If you are looking out for learning every aspects of consulting including technical advanced analysis and much more consulting practices similar to this please feel free to book a call with me from the link in the description so thank you for watching this video please follow the channel please comment if you have any questions please spread a word about the channel to other engineers in your contacts and if you haven't joined my community yet comment below and then i will pass you the link to join the community Thank you once more.